We are interviewing um, Halima Bashir, the author of uh, Tears of the Desert. Um, Tears of the Desert is a memoir of survival in Darfur of an African woman, a very well-educated woman who has gone under um, so many atrocities due to um, war in her country. And um, what we're trying to do now is to raise her profile and also to um, raise awareness on issues that are going on in um, Sudan, where she's from, and um, um, I take this opportunity to thank her for letting us have this interview with her. We know that she, her schedule is very, very intense, but she gave us her time to do this with us, and we thank her very much for this, and um, uh, we know that when people watch her story, they will empathize with her, and her struggle doesn't stop here. She's fighting for the freedom of women of her country and also raising the profile, advocating for women and children of her homeland. Halima, people will be very much interested in knowing your story. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, first of all, I will um, take this moment to thank um, Eclipse Production, Fab Production, and Lasting Value Broadcasting for giving me this opportunity um, uh, to speak about my experience and to share it um, with others. Can you tell us a little bit about Halima Bashir? Who is Halima Bashir? Halima is um, an African woman coming from African country. Um, if I um, take the phrase coming from a burning area, mm -hmm. bleeding area in Africa. And that's Sudan? Yeah, it's uh, the four region of Sudan. Okay. So uh, why, um, um, after um, reading your book several times, I couldn't stop thinking, why did you become a victim if you feel felt that time that you're a victim I'm, I've known you for a while and I know that you're a very strong woman so why was this burden put on you is it because you're a dark African woman or because you are a woman or because you are vulnerable or because um, they feel they can do that to you and get away with it Um, the experience that I, I went through is um, itself it's a testimony for what um, the government of Sudan did for its people and um, the way um, they deal with it um, they want like um, to stop any voices that um, talking, sharing the experience, to expose um, what they did exactly. 
in that region of Sudan. So I feel um, they are following me. They are um, it's still um, like want to to stop that noise, which makes them annoying. And um, also, I'm going to refer to the book again. You were a doctor treating victims of the atrocities that went on in Darfur. And um, you became one of their victims because you, were, um, you wanted your voice to be heard. And um, what motivated you to do that? Because you knew that it could be dangerous for you, but why did you attempt to stop them? This is because, you know, it is so hard just to turn your face away from millions who are suffering, from your people who are died, um, from the area uh, where you you grown up, all your memories, all the things that had been destroyed. I can't turn my face away and say that I'm in a safe place with nice people and that's it. It is my responsibility to send a message because it's the only way I'm fighting with now. Uh, people have lots of different ways to fight. Some of them they're carrying weapons, some of them like fighting through media and um, that's the only thing mm -hmm. I can do at the moment is to be a voice for the voiceless who having got the opportunity to speak about their experiences mm -hmm. and about their suffering. And um, how are you coping with everything that mentioned that is mentioned in your life? How are you coping now, um, finding yourself in the West? How are you coping? I know we'll go back to the question of how you 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 left Darfur, and how did you find yourself here? But before we get to all of that, I just want to know how are you coping now with all the pressure? How are you blocking it out? Because. It's quite a tough experience we've had. Yes, it's really uh, very hard, but um, you know when uh, sometimes you you have some hope for a better future that give you um, strength and power to continue what you are doing. And when you feel that, when I feel that um, there are millions people who suffering and are still suffering, who have suffered and are still suffering. Mm -hmm. They are um, awaiting of a help of any kind. This gives me a power to continue what I'm doing now. And how do you reconcile all the different things that you do? How do you reconcile everything that you do in your life now? Yeah, the um, reconciliation comes from uh, the way that people here uh, help us and support support us on uh, what we went through. And on the other hand, uh, people who are waiting in the, in the refugee camps for the crisis to come to an end. So it's like uh, a mixture of these um, like controversial or uh, like different issues mixed together uh, make me reconcile with, with, with that. Um, would you agree with the rest of the world and human rights activists um, who are different from any other government, would you agree that there's genocide going on in your country? So many people have died, but would you say that there is genocide and the world is not listening? 
there is uh, if we 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 um we we went back to uh, the definition of genocide mm -hmm. and then um, if you look at uh, Darfur itself as a case you find that there is um, a well-planned war targeting specific um, people targeting black Africans and when you um, you look at it and then you, you go back to the what genocide is it is it is a genocide and even um, since 2004 when um, Colin Powell has visited Darfur um, he said this is a genocide even before um, before the investigators um, start um, saying this. So when me, I find somebody who is um, who's denying this, um, I don't know what to say, just um, we're gonna laugh. But it wouldn't stop you from emphasizing that there is genocide. Yes, exactly, there is genocide. When, when, when you, you look at um, um, the people who have been targeted, about the villages which have been burned, about the people who have been killed. When you look, it's well-planned war targeting African people, burning their villages, destroying them, cleaning like the land from any black African. Mm -hmm. And then when you, you see people who are um, uh, what, as they call them, um, Arab decent. They are um, live in peace. When you feel somebody who is next to you, who is living in peace, and you are harassed. Yes. And these Arab um, light-skinned people, these light-skinned uh, people, um, most of the um, atrocities were committed by by them. Who are the Janjaweed? It's an interesting question. The Janjaweed they have got lots of de definitions. Mm -hmm. And if you ask um, any Darfurian who is the Janjaweed, everybody have um, his own Their opinion. Own interpretation, yeah. Yes, about who is the Janjaweed. But if you ask me who is the Janjaweed, I will say the Sudanese government is the Janjaweed. So you believe that they were they're all uh, they behind all of this too. yes yeah. exactly because we um, um i know it's not only in in in, in darfur or, or it's not only in sudan there is like um a silent war or a silent um uh, what is called competition or something between black and white or between uh, arab and africans mm -hmm. it's it's happens in in so many areas in in the world it, all, all over the world it, 